Welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Nero Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is endings and beginnings. As we're on the cusp of the new year, I think it's a great opportunity to be talking about how we can formalize our experience of the previous year to have a sense of completion so that we can then go forward into the new year with a, a fresh feeling, you know, to, to actually be uh, opening the doors to new possibilities. So before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs and flowing into your bloodstream and nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating this brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining stress, tension, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together and very softly rub your fingers against your palms to feel the deliciousness of that sensation, the tickling, the tingling, the softness, whatever, whatever sensation you're feeling, and allow that to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables us to experience the miracle of living. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. We are upon the new year, pretty close. And um, this is a time, the, the, typically the week between Christmas and New Year's for me is a time of um, clearing things up, an opportunity to reflect on the previous year, um, it's an opportunity to get get ready to start new. So maybe putting some things in place that will offer support, you know, closing out other things that have been lingering. It's an opportunity to um, to set yourself up to win. So um, I'm wondering as you look at your own life, and this moment in time, uh, we can look back on the on this past year, and I think we can use the opportunity to celebrate what what this past year has brought. And you know, I know that it's been oh, I for me anyway. There have been aspects that, good morning, good morning. Okay, so Rosalind says she logged off and logged back on in order to have the um, have the comments showing. Rosalind, I so appreciate that you do that. I don't know what happens that makes the comments not show, but I'm, I appreciate your determination. Good morning, good morning. And good morning to everybody else who's joining us. So we're talking about endings and beginnings. And so one of the things that I notice is that when we have a formal ending to something, that can be profoundly supportive. When we can actually close the door and say, okay, that's complete. And um, this is what I accomplished. If we look it, it, it's it's manufactured, obviously, like New Year's is kind of an arbitrary time to be, you know, saying, OK, now it's a new year, so I'm going to make my resolutions or my intentions for the coming year. And um, it's it's an arbitrary thing, but it's a really helpful thing, just like being able to go to sleep at night and wake up into a new day is is um, a really good thing, you know, because it gives us the opportunity to close out some one thing and to create openings for another. And I think that doing that formally is can be really empowering, you know, to to recognize 
um, the opportunity, we have the opportunity all the time. It's just that we don't take it. And I think at this point, at this time of year, there's a general, um, there, there's a group consciousness about new beginnings, endings and new beginnings. So, um, so Rosslyn says, I'm celebrating having a stronger connection to inner peace. Well, that's a beautiful thing. Awesome. And that's, that's something that you can recognize in that celebration. You can say, wow, this chunk of time, look what I was able to achieve. Look, how, look at where I've moved to and um, to, to kind of put a bow on it. Good morning, good morning, Dennis. So wonderful to have you here with us every day that you arrive and, and uh, so glad to have you here. And everybody else who's joining us, it's so good to be with you guys. Um, and um, so this year, what, what can we, you know, there are tragedies and triumphs throughout the year. You know, we have the best of times and the worst of times, perhaps. Uh, I think that I can see that in so many things, um, the best of times and the worst of times. And um, I think that when we formally have a look at a chunk of time, and a year is a really good way to do it, I have to tell you, I don't even remember the beginning of 2021. And I think for many people, 2021 will be a year that um, we can't forget, but we wish we could, <laughs> you know, for some of us. Um, that's not really the case for me. Uh, 2021 was actually quite rich for me in many, many ways. And, 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 um, had its share of tragedy too. Um, I think as we can allow ourselves, I love um, Rosalind that you led with on celebrating, you know, because we get to, we get to celebrate the, why not celebrate life, you know, in all of its colors, in all of its tragedy and all of its triumph, why not celebrate all of it you know and so um maybe we can find a way to celebrate 2021 i know that a bunch of us can celebrate that it's over but um there's there's a lot to celebrate and um even even if it is that you know we got through the pain if there was pain you know that we that we completed certain relationships, that we initiated other relationships, that we have learned all different kinds of things, you know, that we have deepened our awareness of, of different aspects of life. You know, I, I've learned a lot over the past year, for instance, about crypto, cryptocurrency, and um, and that whole world and been introduced to the metaverse, uh, which is this virtual world, which, you know, we can have a conversation about in, you know, in the coming months. Um, there's, uh, I'm wondering what else, I mean, Rosalind, I love that you led with, I'm celebrating a stronger connection to inner peace because you know, that's probably one of the highest and best things to be able to celebrate, right? Uh, what else are you guys celebrating? What else are you, um, what are, what else are you recognizing from this past year that has been a gift to you? So I'm, I'm definitely celebrating Maggie. She was amazing and um, a tremendous contribution to my to me and to everybody who ever got to meet her uh, in person and virtually. So I'm celebrating that with some sadness, obviously. Um, Rosalind says, my intentions are knowing that I have the inner strength 
to deal with whatever comes this way and is important for confidence. Beautiful, Rosalind. And I love that you said my intention rather than resolution, you know, because resolutions get broken intentions you know like we we can be breaking our resolution and then it's over and done you know uh whereas with an intention we can recalibrate we can constantly readjust ourselves and recalibrate to be in alignment with that intention so um yeah i have i have all kinds of intentions and um, making space, you know, feeling, feeling spacious, making space for myself in my, in my personal being, in my environment. And um, I'm wondering if I can maybe encourage you guys to be looking at some of your intentions for the coming year and to encourage you to maybe take a step before the year ends, meaning today or tomorrow, take some kind of step to initiate a structure um, that will support you in accomplishing or manifesting in, in bringing to fruition your vision and your intention for the year. So I, without consciously doing that, I've noticed that that is what I've been doing, not consciously, but, you know, like getting, getting all my accounting straightened out, which was a project, but I, I got it done before the beginning of the year so I can start the year fresh. Um, and that, that's really what all this is about, is to look at what kinds of mechanisms we can create for ourselves to be able to start fresh, to be start, able to start with a sense of expansiveness and possibility. And so Rosalind says, morning cup of groups um, continues to hold mirror in the prayer circle every day and holds that space as long as needed. Rosalind, you're such a gift, and I, I deeply appreciate that. It's so amazing to me, you know, I, um, throughout the day, I'm in, in the world that I inhabited with Maggie. And it's interesting because for the most part, the grief doesn't surface, not like this, you know, like here I am, I show up here, maybe, again, maybe because it was a shared experience, you know, you guys got to share Maggie, um, too. But um, you know, then the tears come. It's just so funny. Anyway, Rosalind says, what question can we ask ourselves that would prompt an intention or write it down for the new year? So I, I think a wonderful question is what does my heart want? What does my heart desire? Um, you know, going forward, what does my heart desire? I think that's a wonderful question you know, because it could be more peace, more love, more connection, uh, more intimacy. Um, it, the, the list is unlimited, right? What does my heart, what is my heart calling out for? What would feed my heart in, in the coming year? What kind of um, growth? What, how can I grow into my best expression? So um, Dennis says, every new beginning comes from other, some other beginnings end. That's beautiful, Dennis. It's so true, right? And the thing is that um, we get, I think when we put closure on something, that allows us to start from a new place. Even if we're in the middle of a project, you know, we can be in the middle of a project and we can put closure on the part that's done and then create a new beginning from what remains. So I think that that can be very freeing because it can enable us to release ourselves from the baggage and the burden that we might feel from, you know, feel like I'm trudging through something. We can close that out, put an end to the trudging and create something as a new beginning. Now I know that like New Year's is an arbitrary marker. 
you know, it's a manufactured marker, but it is in the collective consciousness. And so I think that there is the, the opportunity energetically even more than at other times in the year to be able to uh, put a bow on some of our ex experiences and um, allow ourselves to start fresh. I remember a story of someone or, or someone told me, you know, years, years and years and years ago that um, they picked up their lives and moved to a new city. And, and when they moved to the new city, they decided, hey, I can be any, anybody I want to be here because nobody knows me. So I don't need to perpetuate old, undesirable patterns. I can, I can start fresh. And I think, you know, every day is an op every minute is an opportunity for us to do that but we don't necessarily take advantage of it. And uh, a manufactured transition point like New Year's is a wonderful, a wonderful place to take advantage of that dynamic, I think, or, or that the, the magic of starting fresh. And so maybe the thing to do is to look at the places in our lives where there are things that are lingering or painful or, or um, disruptive or even, even joyful, you know, but what we can do is take this opportunity to put a bow on it and create a fresh start. You know, there may be things that you've been trudging through, you know, close out the trudging and maybe make a, a new intention, find a new perspective to start fresh with something. I think that there's such an opportunity for liberating ourselves, you know, for really um, stepping into a new level of engagement and, and possibility. And I think that, that um, if we look at 2021, we can look at possibilities for 2022. We don't have to predicate our possibilities for 2022 on 2021 by any means. But um, one of the things that you know, I, I look at it and hold out for as a hope for 2022 is global health, you know, and, and freedom from the, the scourge and the cloud that we've been under. And, and if not, if not um, externally, that we can, we can create that level of freedom internally, you know, that we can experience a new perspective toward things, that we can, um, expand our awareness. So I wonder what are the things that you're intending for the new year in terms of being, in terms of manifesting? You know, what, what, is, what are you carrying into the new year? Uh, I think, again, this, this marker gives us an opportunity to to reboot, right? It's interesting, just now a uh, text came up that um, was to a group and it says, tell that inner critic to take a hike and that it, it was perfectly imperfect and so much value delivered. So um, if we look at our, our lives, you know, that's what a perfect message to show up right now, right? Um, that 2021 was perfectly imperfect, that we as human beings are perfectly imperfect and 2021 had lots of value to deliver. It's up to us to recognize it and metabolize it and embody it and um, 
and to move forward and and really truly start fresh i mean i think just the thought of starting fresh my body feels lighter you know when as i'm really allowing that in and and also noticing how i've been kind of laying the foundation for things and uh how that's possible for for everybody you know we have two days before before the new year actually rolls in and like i said i really truly encourage you to look at something in your life that's been that's been kind of eating at you and see if there is some kind of action that you can take to or or structure that you can create to support you in addressing whatever that that thing is in your life. So I told you yesterday that um, I think I told you, I don't know if I told you, uh, a friend of mine is a professional organizer. I think I did tell you, uh, is a professional organizer. And um, she came by yesterday. And so I feel like we've initiated this project of, of clearing out um, my space. And as I said, one of my intentions, my maybe one of my, my biggest intentions for the coming year is a greater experience of spaciousness and freedom and, um, and manifesting, like seeing dreams come true. Like this is a year for dreams to come true, uh, 2022. At least that's my intention. And so Rosalyn says, being less reactive Beautiful, influential voices are of others are less prominent, listening closer to move towards what will feed my heart and allowing that space to happen. Rosalyn, that's beautiful. And I totally suggest that you copy that and put it somewhere that you can see it to remind you, um, because that's a beautiful thing to be to be more connected to yourself. So um, as you're saying, being less reactive, listening closely to move towards what will feed your heart and allow that space to happen. So um, maybe part of it is is hearing your own counsel more, more closely, more, more easily, more vividly. Um, yeah, so intentions for me this year is to have uh, in the spaciousness that I create to have more room for creative expression to to be um, and I'll ask for your support in this to have this be the year that the land for the eco park gets purchased um, which would be wonderfully miraculous and and spectacular um, wondering what other kinds of intentions you might have for this year um, my intention is also to, that globally we awaken to greater care and stewardship of our planet and um, deeper connection with one another. You know, that, that there's more light that we're all propagating collectively and um, that we get to really truly experience the benefits of that light. Um, yeah, so, so much, there's so much. And it's funny that we, we use this time of year as a, as a foil to uh, maybe re-energize our visions and our dreams, but why not? If it works, let's do it, right? This is, this is the year of our, uh, at this coming year, we get to create our future as with every day and as with every year. But how about we like really look at it consciously and, and make conscious and deliberate choices about aligning ourselves with our truest values for standing up for what we truly believe and not just going with the tide of of popular opinion and um, that we awaken to 
to our lives in a richer and deeper and more heartfelt way. So um, Roslyn says, Eco Parkland is a wonderful intention. Yay, yay. And so glad to have you here, Dido. Thanks for being here. I think it is a wonderful intention. And I'd love it if you guys would all align with that with me. I know we've got a lot of powerful juju when we put it together, because uh, I know how powerful we are by ourselves. So uh, Roslyn says, sous vide recipes for 2022 i got the machine for christmas congratulations Rosalind. that's fun i know a lot of people have a lot of fun with the sous vide so i'm sure you'll be able to uh, find plenty of recipes online and i expect that you'll develop some of your very own so dido says my intention is to help us remember mother earth through inspirational stories and dido you are so doing that i have to tell you wow I just got the most chill that started rising up my spine, went into my upper back, through my shoulders and down my arms. So I consider that that is a powerful incantation. And I already know that I know that you're already on track to be to be doing that inspirational and and um, invocational stories, you know, like that. Uh, the stories that we tell, the words that we speak, the thoughts that we think, the emotions that we feel, all of these things are energies that we put out into the universe and the universe responds. So by having the clarity of, of those intentions, you know, let's just take a minute. I don't usually do this, but let's take a minute to really just breathe into our hearts. And, and I don't usually do processes in this context, but let's just take a minute to breathe into our hearts. Let's breathe in light. And as we breathe out, let's, let's make that light even more brilliant. So expand it and, and enrich it. And let's breathe in light again. And with that breath, keep that light expanding. And as you exhale that breath, expand that light even more. So we're just building and building and building this light with each breath to make it more vibrant and more brilliant and more filled with possibility and joy and connection and keep breathing in the light and breathing out that light magnified and expanded. And now as we have this brilliant, expanded, incredible, credible, magnificent light, let's focus that light toward our intentions. And let's use that light for one moment to be bringing responsible and loving, compassionate stewardship to the planet and to connection and to the possibility of humanity on this planet as a collaborator and companion with nature. And just allow your light to expand into the expanded light of all the rest of us who are doing this and being present to it. And let this light just grow and grow and grow with the intention. Feel it vibrating. Feel your body. Feel, the, feel that energy just shifting molecules in our bodies and beings and in the universe and in our sweet, dear mother earth and allow that allow that intention to continue to propagate and expand with every breath that each of us breathes so that without even having to hold our attention on it it grows and expands moment by moment as we breathe life in and out that we bring life with it and with that let's call it a morning so much love to you guys 
so much appreciation and so much possibility awaits us. Let's, let's create the world that we desire. We can do this. So with that, I'm Nira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live each weekday morning here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. Check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network on EWN One with the Earth and EWN Enlightened Living. And just so much love to you. Until next time. And Dennis says, soar, Maggie, soar. <laughs> Thank you for that. So much love to you guys. See you tomorrow, I hope.